right, Dave, so what are you doing? Taking off the old trout wheel. Saving the screws. For brass. Looks like it's seen some better days. There's not much wood left. Yeah. When's the last time you paddled it? It's probably been a while, right? Well, this belongs to a friend of Chase. Yeah, and uh, Peter, he had it uh, in his backyard, I think, and stuff like that. And I think it was probably on the ground quite a bit, so it probably absorbed a lot of moisture off the ground. The stem, the, the stem ends are all rotted. Yeah. I think we can save the decks. We'll have to scarf some new wood into the... Into the in rails. A little better once we get this off. Yeah. Now there's still a mystery about what exact model this is. Well, the current the current thinking is it may be a chum. A chestnut chum. Yeah. Pleasure model. Uh -huh. Lightweight. It's um. I mean, I want. I, I'm gonna go up to the Canadian Museum in Peterborough. Mm. And see what we can find up there that matches it. Crack it off. I think this went on when it was wet. You want to see the original color? See whether that stem in there or not. Okay. Is there? Well, what would you do if there's not much stem left? Uh, you build this, well, I mean, if it's just like the couple of inches, you know. You, you okay. scarf in a new piece of stem, but that's. Yes. Um, I actually replaced the stem once. You never can turn the boat into bookshelves. Um, yeah. The uh, here I'm out in the back had a stem that we replaced. Um, but we can scarf in, if it's just a thick, we can scarf some in. If it's not, um, the other thing we can do is we can rebuild it with uh, epoxy. Right. See that stuff, there's stuff over there, S1 epoxy. Mm -hmm. You mix it up and you, in, you in, inject it. Mm -hmm. It's less than perfect, but it works. Right. Get the thing out enough that we can back it in. I don't know, well, it's pretty. We can just loosen it a little bit. The screwdriver couldn't get it at all? It wasn't doing it at all. Where's that knife? So, what is this piece, Dave? This is the stern stem band, which has some pretty finicky little steel screws. Never use steel screws. <laughs> this, see, it's it's brass, milled German brass. It, there was a point a couple bunch of years ago where uh, there was none of these left in Ontario, and mm -hmm. so a bunch of the canoe builders and their stores got together and they had to order like a shipping container full of them. Mm -hmm. and co they cost, I think it cost like forty five bucks. This one's mm -hmm. not you know, as well shaped as it could be, but usually you work the end and uh, flatten it. Mm -hmm. But we're going to preserve that because it's in good shape and we'll put it back on the new boat once we clean it up a bit. Can you a picture of this? Yep, that's what I'm doing. So this is bedding compound. 
and this is the shoe keel, right? Mm -hmm. So it's all fitted together. See how deep the bedding compound was over this? To ferret into the... is why you never store a canoe upside down resting on the ground. This is all rotten. See the, the, the stem? It's all rotted away. Even if you have it up a couple of inches, mm -hmm. air has got to get out. It can't, it's got to dry out. Mm -hmm. Well, we think the stem right in here is good. Yeah. Yeah. Put your finger in there. Mm -hmm. Does it feel down the side? Yeah. It feels good. Yeah. Alright, well that explains some mysteries. They must have put the um, decks on before they put on the final sheeting, sheeting. <coughs> which would make some sense. Getting them on. Getting this deck out is going to be interesting. We're going to have to remove this piece of sheeting. That's okay. See that? Mm -hmm. So what we do, a little bit of advanced training here. You want to hold that? Here's my little orange handled cutters. Wide rib. What do you say these ribs are called? These ones? Cant ribs. Cant ribs. It's amazing how persistent this wood is, even in its rotted yeah. state. In a way, you know. That easily bronze ring, you know. Be a bitch to get out. Some kind of compound in there. Somebody's maybe a later repair. Mm. See that stuff? Yeah. Some kind of epoxy, maybe? Mm. Somebody's done an epoxy job to try to tie the former thing together.
think that river's salvageable? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Not wrong. Right. Where's my red screwdriver? No, that's not good, it. My good red one. There it is. So we'll take the deck right out. Um, we'll leave it in there now because it's giving it some stabilization. Mm -hmm. right, so when we come back on Saturday morning, we'll start pulling the whole canvas off. And then we'll get a chance to take a look at the back of the ribs. You can see, remember I was telling you about how they do the gores, eh? See how this is fitted in? Mm -hmm. And it's all behind a uh, rib so you don't see it. Right. Um, so you never throw out an offcut. Because <laughs> you never know when you're going to need a six-inch piece, right? Yeah. You cut the shape. So, they get planked up to this point, mm -hmm. and then popped off, and then these are nailed on later with the, with the clinching iron. Ask Santa Claus to bring you a clinching iron. <laughs> Good news. So we're just taking this off. It's sort of like peeling a banana. So you can see a lot of abrasions. Or something that looks like abrasions here, you see? Like I'm wondering what that's about. Where? Like right here. For example. Oh, what happens is grit and sand gets down mm -hmm. between the, the, the planks, uh -huh. between the skin. Yeah. And it can, but this, this also, this could be where it was stuck. Mm. And I'm, I'm, I think maybe it was stuck on with residual linseed oil. Mm -hmm. um, like if they oiled the canoe and it hadn't carried out enough. Mm -hmm. I don't know, it's kind of hard to tell. Mm -hmm. It could also be varnished, but we wouldn't think the varnish would go through that far. Yeah. So we have stripped off the canvas. And on the stems, uh, there was a series of staples running down this ridge that we, uh, we just took out. Dave's still working on his end. All right, we have stripped off the skin of the canoe, and now we are starting the survey. So what do you mean when you say a survey, Dave? Well, we got to look at the overall uh, condition of all of the wood in the boat and decide what has to be replaced. Like you see, I've just marked this rib here. This one's got to come out because it's broken right there. These are cracked, but I, I think they've been repaired. No, maybe that's not a crack. That's just a scrape. See, if it's, if it's maintaining its shape, it's, it's okay. There's one there. So the former... I think there was more than that. Yeah, I think there was two. There was at least like two or three ribs we had identified, as I recall. The, uh, the previous owner, uh, Peter, uh, when I said chum to him, he said that sounded really familiar. He had been thinking yeah. like pal or something like that, so it probably is a chum. That, that, that rung it's, a bell for him. It's too narrow to be a pal. Yeah. I swear there's at least one more broken rib. Do you remember that too? Yeah. Which was that little hole right there. Are you marking the sheeting as well or just the ribs Not at yet. this point? We'll look at the other side when we flip her over. Look at this coloration here. Yeah. I'm thinking, oh, we got a 
the problem with the right in the middle. Mm -hmm. I think this has just been caught in time. Mm -hmm. We can sand this down and we've got good solid wood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it'll come up nice with some sand. Sandpaper. But you hear the difference. You hear on, when you come up here and it's, you can hear the, you can hear and feel the, the punkiness. Mm -hmm. What was the fingernail test that you mentioned before? Oh, you stick your fingernail right into the wood. It's soft. It's like, you yeah. know, you can yeah. tell it's rot. That's how we were telling up in here before. Mm -hmm. then, like the good wood goes to right there. So we're going to, we'll scarf in. We only need to scarf in about an inch of wood to build up the top, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to take much apart to get at it. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of, and we'll, we'll uh, do it at an angle and we'll drill it, put a dowel in. Mm -hmm. Epoxy it all together, mm -hmm. and then we'll do the same thing probably from here and here. Mm -hmm. The outwheels coming out, dovetail it all together into one piece. Mm -hmm. See this? Yeah. See how the... Now, we used to have a five inch plank that we would scarf in. Mm -hmm. On when we were building the boats, mm -hmm. but you don't you don't need it. You can do it all. See these? See how these gores are shaped? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can see the first two along the stem yeah. are dead straight, right. and then you get away with the next one. Right. So you get about four planks, and then you have to start shaping and bending because then you get into this stuff down here. Yeah. And you can really see the compound curves in here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. This 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 wood is doing this. Right. You know? Yeah. It's like almost a yeah, wave. Yeah. That's cool. That's going to be fun to do. Mm -hmm. you know, most of this wood on this side mm -hmm. is okay along the edges. We're going to need little bits of. See this? That's somebody else's builder board. That's the uh, last rest restorer has marked these. Those are where those planks, or those... Um, ribs? I think those are where the replacement ribs are. Mm -hmm. so discolorations from the wetness. Mm -hmm. They're being stored on the ground. Yeah. Even these planks mm -hmm. are basically solid. Little bits in here, and we've we, we may have to replace a little bit here. Okay, see this plank here? Mm -hmm. So we can get away with this one. We can probably, you know, put in a piece like that. Right? Mm -hmm. I don't want to thank you for the next. That's good news.